This is a stimulus check update and daily news report. Got a lot of important news to cover in this video. Mitch McConnell saying that the delay of the Build Back Better bill is the best Christmas gift, and he wants Joe Manchin to join the Republican Party. Progressive Democrats taking this delay really hard. AOC saying that Democrats are delusional and are going to lose Congress if they don't pass the Build Back Better Act. I'll play a video clip from a Democrat representative talking to a Republican Fox host. Really good debate there. You don't want to miss that. I'll give you the latest stimulus check news. Vaccinated workers to get $2,000 bonus next month. Are you eligible? And they're actually going to restart the child tax credits in February to help out with the lapse going on in January. Vice President Harris is going to remove lead pipes, and New York City is shutting down due to Omicron. I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below, and I'm giving $200 to my subscribers. I'll talk more about that later on in the video. But first, quick COVID update. So New York, COVID cases top 20,000 for daily record as shutdown spread, and New York is basically shutting down a lot of its things. So this is a whole new animal. New York reports highest single day case of total pandemic. Uh, we have Broadway shows, sports events, a lot of other things. Also, a new policy called test to stay that's going to be enrolled in schools. Check out this video clip summarizing everything. The situations playing out in parts of our country right now are both jarring and familiar. COVID is spreading fast and hospitalizations are rising. The virus once again disrupting everything from live performances to restaurants to schools and sports. The NFL announced today it's postponing three games this weekend as the league deals with an outbreak among players. Similar story in college hoops. Two of the top ranked teams in the nation, Duke and UCLA, both scrapping games from their schedule. In New York City, another popular tourist attraction canceled. Just last hour, Radio City announced the Rockettes nixed all of their shows for the remainder of the season. The new wave of infections also taking a toll on restaurants and bars in the big city. At least a dozen temporarily closed this week. Today, the New York governor, Kathy Hochul, said New York State recorded its highest number of cases since the pandemic began. Close to 21,000, and the majority of them still the Delta variant. But the CDC director warns Omicron will become the most dominant strain in the U.S. in a matter of weeks. Dr. Rochelle Walensky says it reinforces the need for more Americans to get vaccinated and boosted. We've seen cases of Omicron among those who are both vaccinated and boosted, and we believe these cases are milder or asymptomatic because of vaccine protection. Meantime, the White House just announced a new plan to keep kids in classrooms. The strategy allows children to stay in school even if they've been exposed to COVID. Here's NBC's Heidi Prisbala on our top story tonight. The White House is concerned about major disruptions at hospitals and schools due to Omicron, and they outlined a plan to prevent what we saw last year, which is most children learning virtually. We now have new data and updated CDC guidance showing the effectiveness of an approach called test to stay, which involves frequent rapid testing of students at least two times per week and robust contact tracing. The idea is that with frequent testing, even kids who may have been exposed do not need to quarantine as long as they test negative. The second part is a partnership with teachers unions to get as many teachers boosted as possible. Omicron is already prompting some school closures though, and this is before it truly crashes ashore here. One of the new CDC studies that the CDC director cited is based on 90 schools in Lake County, Illinois, and it estimated that test to stay prevented more than 8,000 missed school days, but some schools are already closing with a rise in COVID positivity. I've also interviewed school officials about test to stay, and it basically requires a lot of manpower, requiring a lot of supplies and staffing that these schools just don't have. Yet they are especially vulnerable given their vaccination rates. Just 18% of kids age five to 11 have had at least one shot. That's 61% of those aged 12 to 17 who've had a single dose. What are your thoughts on that test to stay policy going on in the schools or potentially going on in the schools? Is it a good idea, bad idea? Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, so moving on to the Build Back Better, which is pretty much delayed and dead at the moment. Mitch McConnell says delaying Biden's agenda, including an expanded child tax credit, is the best Christmas gift Washington could give working families. So uh, Mitch McConnell and Republicans are celebrating and praising the fact that this is not going through and they love Joe Manchin. Mitch McConnell also said it would be a great idea for 
mansion to switch parties. Uh, what he said more specifically, as you know, he likes to talk. It would not surprise you to know that I've suggested for years it would be a great idea representing a deep red state like West Virginia for him to come over to our side. Joe Manchin has been confronted about that in the past and he wasn't too happy. Uh, also, Democrats are not very happy about the Build Back Better bill being uh, delayed, especially progressive Democrats. I played this video clip a little towards the end of my video yesterday, but here's Bernie Sanders calling out Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. So you got 50 Republicans yeah. who are not prepared to do anything for the environment of working families. You've got 48 people in the Democratic caucus who are prepared, and a president of the United States prepared to think big. And you have two Democrats who, in my view, are kind of acting like Republicans. And uh, to me, I respect other people's points of view, but I do not respect the arrogance of any member of the Senate who says, you know what, I'm going to torpedo this entire bill, supported overwhelmingly by the American people who are sick and tired of paying outrageously high prices for prescription drugs, sick and tired of seeing billionaires not paying their fair share of taxes, tired of seeing people sleeping out on the street, kids and families not being able to enjoy decent quality childcare at an affordable cost. And you got two people who say, you know what? Hey, if you don't do it my way, I don't care what the president wants, I don't care what 48 of my colleagues want, it's my way or the highway. And that I regard as arrogance. You can disagree. Look, I have disagreements, yes. as you well know. All right, you fight for your ideas, but you don't say my way or the highway. And that uh -huh. I feel very strongly about. Bernie Sanders getting very upset there, as well as many progressive Democrats. But let me ask you a question. If the Build Back Better bill contained stimulus checks, general fourth stimulus checks for everybody, would you have supported it? I know a lot of people saying that they're not in support of it, but if it did have stimulus checks, would you have supported it? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. AOC says it's actually delusional to think Democrats can get reelected without acting on student debt or expanding child tax credits totally agree with the student debt because that was a big promise by President Biden. But more specifically, what AOC says here is it is actually delusional to believe Dems can get reelected without acting on filibuster or student debt, Biden breaking his Build Back Better promise, letting child tax credit lapse, zero path to citizenship, etc., especially when they run for from convos about race and culture, which is what one-sixth was about. We need to act now. So uh, AOC is kind of helpless in this situation. Nothing that she could do, nothing that the pro progressive Democrats could do. It really, it was just up to Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, which is the reason why this got delayed. Pramila Jayapal saying, we fight inflation by passing Build Back Better and cutting costs. This can't wait. The House did our work. Now it's time for the Senate to do theirs. They must stay in session. So Senate is about to leave for their winter recess for their vacation and uh progressive democrats saying they have to stay in session to get it done doesn't look like it's going to happen for 2021 as P president biden said chuck schumer made an announcement on it but there could be some other type of stimulus package coming in the future according to one house representative so house representative jamal bowman calls on congress to pass more COVID help so he cited the past stimulus packages where it had stimulus checks unemployment assistance, and that's what he wants more of to happen in 2022. The Build Back Better bill seems to not be as popular. Maybe a stimulus package with stimulus checks, unemployment assistance may be more popular among people, uh, especially if lockdowns happen like it's kind of happening in New York City. But this is still very speculative. We don't know if that's going to happen. Take a look at this video clip right here of a Republican Fox host debating a Democrat representative. Uh, this is a really good debate. Check this out. And to Ro Khanna, what he makes of that, the California Democratic Congressman, kind enough to join us. Congressman, good to see you again. Um, is it out this year? Is it not going to happen this year? Neil, I don't think it'll happen this year, but we need to get it done. We need to have a vote on it one way or the other. Let's have the vote in January uh, and let's move on. I think if we bring a vote, there's a good chance that people will vote yes when it's actually on the floor. All right. Uh, in the Senate, that means that uh, Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema would vote for it. Or you're confident they would. They don't seem of that mindset now, but force with the issue, you think they would? I'm not 
confident. I mean, obviously, it's up to them, but I think if the president comes out and says, look, this is the agreement I had, this was the framework, I looked people in the eye and I got the House to vote for it and I had 50 senators, I need to do this to lower health care costs, lower prescription drug costs, lower child care costs. I think there's a good chance. He needs to make the case. We need to have a vote. Uh, and that's, I think, the way forward. All right. Um, there are a lot of people who look at that and say, uh, even within your own party, sir, they hope it never comes to fruition because uh, the, the popular support right now uh, isn't there. And then that what is there is co growing concern about inflation and what appears to be the inability of the administration to do anything about it. What do you say? There's a lot of popular support for the policies. I mean, people want prescription drugs costs go down. That would tackle inflation. People want to have child care costs go down. People want to make sure that they have assistance with rent, where rent is going up. So I, I actually think this puts more money in the working class. there are more people class. paying for that than getting anything out of that, right? Isn't that the essence of inflation? No, I mean, I, I think this bill, you're right, is paid for, and that's why it won't have an inflationary pressure. You're not going to have more Treasury bonds but, but at the it, but Fed. But it isn't, it isn't paid for, right? It, it is paid for. I mean, it is paid for by a tax on people making over $10 million. It's paid for by making but, sure but it corporations... But right? Even allowing for that, Congressman, it's about $367 billion shy in revenues over 10 years. Now, that could change. But conversely, if some of its more popular features, uh, when the CBO was asked to crunch the numbers, if they weren't phased out in one, two, or three years, as many of them are, um, this is actually going to be a $5 trillion measure, not a $2 trillion measure. What do you say? But you can't do a hypothetical and do something that the Republicans aren't supporting. I mean, it's a one-year bill. That's like saying, why, why don't we have a 10-year score uh, for a defense budget? I mean, we, this is for a one-year bill, and the CBO has scored it properly. Now, there but it is, is a, a different... legitimate question, right, sir? I mean, I mean, you're quite right. We've done this in Republican administrations as well. But if, if you're talking about very popular programs and you say that some of these features are quite popular, what Congress would let them phase out in one, two, or three years? So what What's wrong with asking the CBO, just in case a Congress doesn't do that, um, what are we left with? And that's what the, the CBO came up with. Neil, it'd be a reason, it's a reasonable question, and here's what would be fair. If you could get me 10 Republicans who were willing to vote for the child tax credit, I'd say, okay, they have an argument that it's permanent. But here's what's hypocritical. You can't have the Republicans not give a single vote for these programs and in the same breath claim that they're going to be permanent. Everyone knows that's not true. I mean, do you believe, really, that if the Republicans take over, they're going to continue these programs? So I don't think they can speak from both sides of their mouth on the issue. All right, well, you raise a good point, but obviously they would be very popular and they'd re meet resistance trying to get rid of those so you know you could argue back and forth as to how easy that would be to just dispense with this but let's say it never happens congressman this never comes to passage um there are some in your party who are saying so be it it, it would be better to fight the fight on dealing with inflation and and getting a handle on that um hoping whatever the federal reserve is doing will work and that will have far more of an impact next year in the midterms than anything else. What do you say? You know, I disagree with that. I think what will have impact is if we lower prescription drug costs, we put more money in the hands of the working class, and we give kids in this country preschool and lower those costs for families. But I think what, we'll, what we need to remind people of is what we've done. The American Rescue Plan, stimulus checks for everyone, the child tax credit, the infrastructure bill. For the first time, people have been talking about infrastructure we delivered. So this is obviously something we need to do with Build Back Better, but we've already had a successful year. But finally, and you and I have gotten into this before, Congressman, we didn't have any of those features, uh, you know, in, in, in our law prior, certainly uh, to the pandemic, when we got as low as three and a half percent unemployment. So we were doing gangbusters without any of these features then. Uh, you, you could make the argument that, that even the mere talk of this and these benefits are, are reasons enough for people maybe not to apply for jobs, maybe not to find alternatives to the government. What do you say? You know, I just don't think the data bears that out, and the unemployment rate is low. But I agree with you. These features, these benefits weren't there, but that's why I think working-class Americans bear have had... what I said, right, sir? I mean, we were at 3.5% unemployment. I, I, I'm talking pre-pandemic, you know. So yeah. we had a history going back without any of this stuff doing quite well. 
Well, but uh, but we are now almost at four percent. But here's the thing, Neil. I believe the working class has had the short end of the stick for the last 40 years. I think their prescription drug costs have been too high. I think their child care costs have been too high. Their health care costs have been too high. You're right. These weren't there. They haven't been there for 40 years. It's time we start delivering for the working class. And that's what really this bill is about. All right. What did you think about that debate? Personally, I like it when the Democrats and Republicans are debating live just within a few minutes of each other, kind of calling each other out. Out. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think Ro Khanna got a little squeamish. He was hard, wasn't really answering the questions directly, uh, but it was really interesting. So uh, when it comes to child tax credit, the White House may send eligible families two child tax credits checks in February to make up for lapse next month. So we don't know for sure if the child tax credit is going to be extended for one year, uh, which would make it go on for the year of 2022, once every month on the 15th, with the Build Back Better bill being delayed, dead, or never happening. Uh, we don't even know if a child tax credit would happen, but basically they're saying if it does happen, then payment will resume in February with an extra two checks then. Uh, when it comes to other stimulus check app, uh, articles, uh, so this will be the last time to mention this, but applications opening Saturday for $500 stimulus check. Make sure to schedule your appointment. This is what's going on in St. Louis today uh, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I believe. So uh, check that out. You could call the number 8, or sorry, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, 866-948-3742. If you live in St. Louis, you could get a $500 stimulus check. Also, this one right here, vaccinated workers to get a $2,000 bonus next month. Are you eligible? So this is going on in Phoenix, Arizona. The city of Phoenix has approved incentives of up to $2,000 for qualified employees. According to city records, qualified full-time employees will receive $500 for getting vaccinated. And if they get fully vaccinated by January 18th of 2022, the employees will get an extra $1,500. Part-time vaccinated workers in Phoenix will get up to $1,000. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. That's a huge payment to get vaccinated and to work. Uh, let me know your thoughts. If you were not vaccinated and you were offered $2,000 to get vaccinated, would you get vaccinated? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that policy too. Uh, so the $2,000 per month fourth stimulus check to every American petition, currently at 2,984,000 signatures. Uh, at this rate, it's sort of going a little over 1,000 a day. It might actually hit 3 million by the end of the year. Uh, which unfortunately wouldn't mean that there's a forced stimulus check, but that's what the goal of the petition is. Uh, also, lead pipes have contaminated water for decades. Biden's new plan will replace them. So this is a new plan just unveiled yesterday by Vice President Kamala Harris, and uh, this is going to get rid of the lead pipes, hundreds of thousands of them that we have in the country. Take a look at this video clip summarizing it. Focusing on the future, it's the only way we're going to be able to build a new green infrastructure, water systems, yeah. where no one in this country has to drink poison water. Our administration is releasing the Biden-Harris Lead Pipe and Paint Action Plan to direct and coordinate the efforts of local, state, and federal partners to a single goal, to significantly accelerate the removal of lead pipes and paint over the next 10 years particularly in communities that have historically been left out and left behind. Vice President Kamala Harris yesterday unveiling a new plan to replace lead pipes and lead paint across the country, making good on a promise that Joe Biden made while announcing his campaign for president. And joining us now, U.S. Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Secretary, thank you very much for joining us. We keep hearing about the nation's crumbling infrastructure. When it comes to lead pipes and paint, just lay out how bad it is for us. When you, there's hundreds of thousands of pipes in our country uh, that there's water going, drinking water going through uh, that's going into homes and schools all across America. And when you think 2021, almost 2022, uh, we're still dealing with that issue, uh, that needs to change. And the president laid that out when he was, as you mentioned a minute ago, when he was running for president. And, and quite honestly, all of his infrastructure bills, including what we'll talk about in a minute, truck driving, I'm sure, 
uh, he talks about building a better America. And, and that means adding to the greatness of our country. That means supporting and building new roads and bridges. That means drinking water. That means broadband access. Uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, when, when January, I mean, sorry, March of 2020, I was mayor of Boston, and, and we had to shut schools down. And we also had to send, when we send kids home with computers, we had to send them home with little hotspots so they could get on the Wi-Fi. So it is about the future of America. And, and there's, there's really, it's absurd that, that, that people in our country and, and young people in our country are, are drinking water through lead pipes right now. Yeah, it is absurd. The American Water Works Association estimates that the, replace, the cost of replacing them all is more than 60 billion. Um, President Biden asked for 45 billion from Congress to get it done. But as part of that bipartisan and infrastructure bill, in the end, there's only 15 billion. It's a long way off, isn't it? The amount of money that's been designated is, is not going to do nearly enough to replace all of these pipes. But some, some of this opportunity will, will cities and towns all across American states also have plans and we just need to continue to collectively work together. This money, this money is, is on top of what cities and towns have allocated. So I'll give an example. I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin about a month and a half ago. I was out there with Mayor Barrett and he took me to a, a public works project and what they were doing was replacing lead pipes in the city of Milwaukee, pipes that were connection into homes. So, so this is going to take a, a, an all of government investment, not just simply federal government investment, but many states and cities have already allotted or allocated money. This will help them as well get to that point. What are your thoughts on the lead pipes being removed? Good idea, bad idea? Should that money be used for something else or is this a legit cause to spend billions of dollars on? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. And that is all the news I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. And guys, if 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 you if you want to be fashionable, be fashionable. Do whatever you want to do now, now yes. or never. Because never. that if you do it now, you'll you'll do it, you'll do and it. you have the experience about it. You'll so that's all I wanted it. to tell for you today. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. So I am about to go play some pickleball, one of my favorite activities. Do that, try to do that every Saturday. Uh, hopefully you're gonna do something fun. Don't forget giving out $200 checks. More details to that down in the description below. And hope you have a wonderful weekend. You do something fun, uh, do something that's meaningful to you and puts you in a better mood. If you wanna check out my latest video on my other channels, you can click this link up here or this one down over here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Be safe. Thank you for watching.